We have reached the end of my eight tips on reframing your thinking and renewing your mind. Come and take a listen to tip number eight, as I believe it will bring you greater understanding to having success in your life. Welcome to my podcast, giving you a fresh start after trauma. I'm Regina Sanchez, your host, and I'm so glad you're here. Starting over after trauma can be a blend of real pain and some hope, sadness, and then some joy. It's a mixture of moments of faith and then moments of fear. There will be times when you'd rather not remember, but then times of excitement. You may fail along the way, but if you keep moving forward, your discouragement will turn to peace. Some days you may feel like giving up, and other days you're running in your race to victory. That, my friend, is a journey of having a fresh start after trauma. And if you are in any of these places and need some encouragement, you have stopped at the right place. Let's journey together to giving you a fresh start after trauma. Join me now to be revived, rejuvenated, and restored to a place of living free from your past emotional pain. Welcome, friends. Regina Sanchez here, your spiritual life and health coach. Thank you for joining me today on my podcast, giving you a fresh start after trauma. I'm delighted you are here, so let's get started. Well, you have made it through seven tips to help you reframe your thinking and renew your mind. Now, this list is by no means all-inclusive, but it is definitely a start. It's important to understand that it is something you must be conscious to apply daily and sometimes many times a day. Your mind does not just get renewed automatically on your first application or try. So have you lived with your mindset for decades? I did. So it's going to take some time to cleanse your mind of the wrong thinking and bring in proper God-ordained thoughts. It's just like when I was organizing and I would be hired to declutter a room or, frankly, the whole house. It took time to remove the clutter and make decisions on what to keep or not keep. Well, it's the same with our mind. We have to take the time to determine what are the thoughts or the clutter in our mind, and is it serving us well? One of the questions always is, well, what are those thoughts I should be thinking? Well, that's where our last tip brings us, because it is important to have wisdom over intellectualism. So tip number eight is having wisdom over intellectualism. Now understand, it's not just any wisdom. It's God's wisdom. We live in a society where education has become a God and everybody must go to college and get that four-year degree, if not higher. And if you don't do that, you're not smart. You're not marketable. You're not intelligent. Now, mind you, there's nothing wrong with learning. But I have found a lot of times that the most highly educated person can lack wisdom, understanding, logic, and, and sadly, common sense. Now, I know that all my tips include having God part of reframing your thinking and renewing your mind. Because for me, I cannot do life without him. I did for years and realized what a mess I made of things. I had a lot that had to be undone, renewed, and healed. Know that God says that anyone who lacks wisdom can just ask him and he will give it to you liberally. That is truly what the scriptures say. But you want to be sure it's his wisdom. Why? Because he did create the universe, all that's in it, and mankind. And I don't think there's anyone better at seeking wisdom from than God. Now, wisdom is different than intellect. 
Intellect is being educated in a specific area of life, whereas wisdom is having a knowing about something that's not necessarily to be found in a book. Wisdom is having a knowing that perhaps you shouldn't go to work a certain way this morning because God knows there's a major traffic issue or car accident. After 9-11, many people came forward with testimonies that they had a knowing not to go to work early or to work from home or take their child to daycare that morning. It caused them to be delayed and hence they missed potentially being harmed. It was a wisdom they had that they didn't even realize that they were following until after it happened. They felt it was God's wisdom that protected them that day. And the key was for them was they were, they were obedient. They had this sense inside of them to do something different that morning and they obeyed the prompting. When God speaks to us, it's usually in a still small voice and not necessarily a shout from the mountaintop. Although if he chose to, he could shout because after all, he is God. Well, you might ask, how do you get that wisdom? As I said before, you need to ask the Father. But to feel comfortable asking and then listening for the answer, it is very important to have a relationship with him. It's a matter of trust. Does that mean he won't speak or warn someone who's not following him? No. God can and will do what he wants, when he wants, and as he wants. But having a relationship with him will definitely give you the wisdom you need. So start each day just thanking the Father for your new day. and Ask him to give you wisdom where, where and when you are in need. Don't throw away your intellect, but don't make it more important than God's wisdom. Apply the filter of truth over every thought you have. And it can feel exhausting and you can feel like, oh my gosh, how can I get through my day if I've got to filter every thought? Well, sadly, you have to because you need to know and be sure that what you are thinking is really truth, is really wisdom. Now, if you would like to be coached in learning how to have God in your life and being healed from your trauma, then let's get started. And part of my coaching program is to help you reframe your thinking and renew your mind. Having someone walk alongside you is something you might need to reach that victory. And there is no shame in needing help. So I hope you enjoyed tip number eight, wisdom over intellectualism. And I hope that you will Take the time and go back and review all eight tips. Review them and because they're, they're short messages. Listen to them over and over again until they become part of your being, until they become part of your life, until they become part of your thinking. And you will begin to see just little miracles start to unfold in your life. And you'll feel better in your body, in your emotions, and your days will go smoother. So thank you, friends, for taking this time to listen to my message. I hope that you're blessed. I hope that you're encouraged. And I hope that if this message blesses you, number one, please like and share. If there's somebody in your life that you know that needs to really reframe their thinking and you know how you can know that they need to reframe their thinking? That when you're with them, it's exhausting. Or you don't feel good, you walk away feeling, ugh, that wasn't fun. <laughs> because perhaps they need to reframe their thinking. Perhaps they need to renew their mind. So friends, be blessed, be encouraged. Know that I love you and I want to be here for you. I am here for you. And I want to help walk you to a life of success, abundance, and victory. 
God doesn't want you stagnant. God doesn't want you in a hole. God doesn't want you in a pit. God doesn't want you feeling doom and gloom, living in foreboding thoughts every day. That's not what he wants for you. He wants you to live in his kingdom and to live it in abundance. So thanks again for listening. I know I said that a hundred times, but thank you. God bless. Have a great day. Thank you, my friends, for taking the time to listen to my podcast. I hope you found it uplifting and encouraging, and that it guides you to having peace, love, joy, and health in your life. If you would like more information on my coaching programs, then go to my website, reginasanchez.com, where you can see the services I offer to give you a fresh start after trauma. You can also find my book, Can I Have Your Heart, Daddy, on Amazon. It is my personal journey back to the heart of my Heavenly Father. Be blessed, be encouraged, and know that you are loved.